Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony Tian, and if you're new to this channel, I'm a third year medical student here at University of Otago in New Zealand. So basically today I want to talk about uh, some of the Node Summary app that I've been using and throughout years I'm sort of uh, jumping in between them. So today I just wanted to compare some of the advantages and disadvantages that I personally find uh, among them and make a comparison to help you to choose what is the best app for you to do your Node Summary. So before we start, I want to make this clarification between note taking app and note summary app. So basically in my process of study, I have this two parts. Uh, first, I need to do the note taking and then I will try to summarize all the notes that are scattered all over the place. So they might uh, be in my note taking app like notability or good notes or whatever or it could you just be on a sheet of paper or it could be in some uh, random lab manual that has been sitting around. So after I got all of these uh, notes written down and jotted all over the place, I'll try to bring them together, integrate all of them, and if possible, I'll try to link it to the previous content that I've learned. Because university is very different from any previous study environment that you've been in, uh, for instance in high school, you always have a textbook to refer to about what you need to study and everything you need is in there. Whereas in university, a uh, different lecturer will have different take on different subject that they're teaching. So basically for any knowledge point there might be things that they want you to know that might not uh, be in a single textbook it might be scattered all over the place it might be based on some research paper and especially in medical field there's a lot of things that has been discovered very regularly on a daily basis there's millions of research being published every single year so basically with all this very rapid update on the content you want a very efficient way to be able to collate all of these content together and sort of create your own database, your own textbook, your own sort of version of Google that can help you to easily access all of these content whenever you need it. So first I want to start with Notion. So Notion is this very popular app that has been all over the place. It has sponsored heaps of content creators that have been watching and also uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers that I personally follow are all using this. Uh, Notion app that it's free for students. So if you uh, register with a student email, you're gonna get it for free. So some of the key advantages of this app is that uh, it has a database feature. So basically it allows you to have all your notes being collated in this one single database that you can have on the sidebar. And by viewing this single database, you can change all of your um, content into different views. You can have them and table and gallery and basically different kind of view have uh, different kind of lineages. You can also have them set in a calendar for you to sort of organize your daily life. And also you can forever expand into little pages within the pages. So basically you can create sub pages um, as many times as you want and there's no limitation to it. And there's also heaps of third party to, uh, third party support. So basically within the page, you can embed a lot of different kinds of content, including photos, of course, PDF, these kind of basic stuff, but also things like diagrams and uh, Google Drive uh, files, and there's heaps more, and you can have an explore by yourself in the app. Uh, if your student is free and if you're not, there's a couple days or weeks of free trial. I don't really know because I'm a student and I just automatically got the free trial. And you can create your own template and basically after creating your own template, you can just uh, replicate content as much as you want. So for instance, if you want to create something that's related to pharmacology and um, Basically, for all the drugs in pharmacology, we always need to know its uh, mechanism of action. We always know, need to know its dosage, its indication. So basically, you can set, uh, let's say you can set these four subbars underneath the main medication and you can just use that template uh, repeatedly when you want to add a new drug to your drug, li uh, drug list. So the template definitely makes your life a lot easier and also if you're a book reader, right, and you want to summarize the things that you've learned in a book, you can always create a customized um, a booklet, a customized book summary template for yourself or maybe even just a, uh, a I know a lot of people who use Notion to uh, sort of make this daily planner that they have um, these uh, to-do lists sitting there and they basically have a whole chunk of it and then underneath they have a chunk for um, some of the per, uh, personal learning that they have throughout the day and maybe another chunk 
with either you plan to do tomorrow or some of the remain t remaining tasks. And basically with all of these features, um, with all of these content, you can use template, right, to replicate them again and again without having to, you know, copy and paste the previous one and then delete everything that you don't want to have a clean slate. So you can just create a template and then tap the plus button. Yeah, so it just makes it makes everything easy. And also uh, compared to RemNote, which is the app that I'm personally using, I, I find it a lot easier to get your hands on. Basically the learning cost is, is lower than RemNote. Also recently has added some features like the simple block. Basically, you can have two blocks of content in different pages synced to each other. So basically when you add it on one side, the other side does the same thing. So it makes it a little bit easier to link between different content that you want. Uh, one of the things that I find that's sort of missing from this app is the PDF marking. Um, you can embed PDF into a page, but uh, you can add caption to it. You can add a little notes underneath it but you can't really sort of do the on page uh, marking in the app which I find a little bit annoying because um, a lot of the time I do wish you know I can just have everything in the app. Also another thing I want to mention is that Notion does have iOS app and a iPad OS app so basically it has support for all your uh, mobile devices and of course Android as well. All right and next up we move to OneNote so OneNote is another uh, those big name that is super popular and it's completely free. So one thing that I really like about it is that it has a handwriting support alongside with the typing support. So that has been really convenient for me because personally I use the iPad and it's just very satisfying to be able to have the handwriting features and also it's synced to my laptop so I can just view it anytime I want. Another thing that's really nice about it is that it has endless canvas, so basically the page is forever expanding. So if you love making diagrams, okay, if you love having a gigantic unlimited paper to just linking ideas between ideas and have this massive mind map for you to sort of summarize all the content that you want to know, then this is a great app for you because it just goes on forever. Uh, but the thing is, it sucks at being a summary app because within OneNote, there's only certain levels of subpage that you can make within the notebook. Also, it kind of uh, lacks the feature and the flexibility as in, as in Notion or RemNote that you can just create a subpage uh, wherever you want. It can be sitting at the bottom of a page, middle of a page, top of a page. Whereas in OneNote, it has this very classic uh, take of a notebook division and you can only go three set, uh, three levels down and then that's all the limit you've got. And um, another thing about OneNote that really irritates me is um, although it has a handwriting support but it has no handwriting search feature which is just doesn't make sense because if I do have handwriting notes and the whole point of taking digital notes is sort of the idea that you can just command F to find it whenever you want but at least on iOS or Mac OS there isn't such feature for you to search handwriting and I, I was doing some googling and I did find that I have the handwriting search on the Windows system so if you're using um, the Microsoft OneNote on a Windows laptop then you're totally fine but if it's iOS or Mac OS then you're missing this handwriting search feature so I do hope that their software engineers can just incorporate this feature as soon as possible because it is very very important and I feel like if it if they does add that feature and it would make it a, a very useful note taking app, not summary be, just because it doesn't have that flexibility. Okay, finally, let's move on to RemNote, my personal favorite app. It has a free version, and the a free version does have a lot of its main features, and it doesn't disturb you with all the crazy ads like some of the other free app. And they have, on their website, specifically stated that they guarantee that they will always have a free version, but, you know, they, they guarantee they have a free version, but you never know how much feature they're going to cut, but so far at the moment, it has been very useful. And of course, if you're willing to pay $6.99 US dollars, that's about $10, $11, New Zealand dollars, so sort of expensive, 
per month for the subscription or you can just pay 300 US dollars in one go for their lifetime subscription which I mean of course if you're rich go for it it's probably a better deal long term as well I might pay for that 300 if I end up not changing back to some of the other app or a new app by the end of this year I'll, I'll probably pay that money just because it's a sort of like an investment and it also, also supports the developer to you know add more features um, into it some of the best part of it is that it has flashcard support. The basic cards, the closed cards, um, anything you, that you have in Anki, you have over here. Also have image occlusion, but that is a paid feature. But I find their image occlusion so much better than the Anki one. It's just because it's super easy to use and you can just turn any image that you have in your notes into an image occlusion card by simply right clicking instead of you know, having to go through all the Anki shenanigans. And another fun feature about it is that they have all these things called RAM. So in human language, okay, it just means a term, a word. Okay, so you can create all these RAM and you can give each RAM a page and give it a definition. And you can link this RAM back into the page. It's super good, this app, okay, in short, it's exceptional as making linkage between different content. It can link knowledge from different timelines together and it gives you a very clear and very direct image. The, the way they incorporate it has made this process just 100 times easier than doing it manually by yourself. Basically, Ramno just sort of did this process more organically. So give you an example, okay? So let's say if I'm using this this drug, right? Let's say a, a beta blocker, right? So I, for example, I've I've learned about beta blocker before. It's a kind of drug. Well, it, it is good for controlling um hi hypertension, for good for controlling uh, high blood pressure. Okay, but now I'm like. Okay, so I have the beta blocker over there, but also another feature of it is can it can be used as a rate control drug in atrial fibrillation. So, I mean, obviously I can make that connection myself, right? I can have beta blocker here as a treatment for that and also as beta blocker as a treatment for this. Okay, but basically in REM nodes, you can create something called a REM, okay? The REM, the term, I, I already mentioned it. You can create this REM called beta blocker and on the beta blocker, Right, you already made this note in um, the atrial fibrillation part and in the hypertension control part, right? So at the blood pressure control, you have this drug called ooh, uh, a beta blocker and at the atrial fibrillation, you have this drug called a beta blocker as well. So obviously you can make this connection yourself, but also you can just create a beta blocker RAM and automatically it's going to search where all the beta blockers has been used at um, all the other places and it can collate everything onto the same page. So now, let's say if you want to learn the drug beta blocker, you don't have to do all this somewhere yourself because you already have this RAM called a beta blocker and anytime when it's mentioned, you can see it. It's being listed under the page of the RAM of the beta blocker. So it just shows you, oh, uh, it's been mentioned in the treatment of hypertension. It's been mentioned in the treatment of atrial fibrillation. And maybe in the future, the beta blocker, of course, this is not true. I'm just making this up now. Okay, what if the beta blocker has a, has another function and it, it can treat another disease? Then it can automatically be linked to it. And also, because you've created a page, any time that you want to use it again and you want to sort of link it back to this, you can just create a hyperlink and it will be very easily uh, retraced back to the REM page and also have the place where the beta blocker is mentioned again added to the REM page. Just super efficient in linking everything together and I find that exceptionally useful especially if you're a student that you need to collate all of these information together and personally in medicine especially a lot of drug has been shared at different places, a lot of concepts, a lot of uh, physiology for instance like the hypersensitivity like maybe type 2 type hypersensitivity as in a lot of places and to do the summary, like if you want to do the summary of what all that type 2 hypersensitivity uh, condition is, of course you can go in and dig all your nodes and you find out each one of them, or you can just have type 2 hypersensitivity as a RAM and every single time when it's being mentioned, it's going to be listed on the page of the RAM of type 2 hypersensitivity and you can just see all of them immediately, also with the feature 
that each one of th these conditions that's been mentioned, you can link to its page directly, okay, with all the very thorough details that you want. And so basically that's RamNote, and there's a lot of other features you can use. Now the downside, okay, so one thing that ir really irritates me, it's sort of the only thing that irritates me, is that it's lack of a table function, all right? It doesn't have the, the table view, the database view, because I came from Notion and I'm sort of just missing the table, the gallery, the multi-different view that I can have in Notion. It's just not here, but um, obviously because all the other features that it has, it kind of just overrides it. And something I forgot to mention is in RamNode, you also have PDF marking. So um, a little bit different than the typical sense of PDF marking. You, you can't just take notes directly on top of it, but basically you can highlight specific parts and then you can make a note that's linked to the specific part. So once you click the hyperlink, it's gonna link you to the PDF where you marked. So it's kind of like you can refer to this region of the PDF that it has a certain thing. So not as direct as a, a direct um, on, on page PDF marking, but because the the nature of RamNote is sort of this note summary rather than a PDF marking app, as this is I, I, I think this is one of the best way to sort of incorporate this at the moment. So the final thing I want to talk about all these app is that you, you really can't find a perfect one. Okay, so all of them is gonna have their downsides and their upsides. And but basically um, there's a suitability for all of them. So Notion is definitely more gravitating towards like people um, who's running their own business. They're trying to have their life organized in general and they have multiple aspects that they need to deal with. They sort of use Notion as a summarize summarize tool for everything. But it, of course, it can certainly be used as a knowledge summary app because it has a lot of crossover as you know, business management, life management, all of that. But all of this feature is a uh, concept of design is gravitated more towards a business sort of aspect. So it is great, but not so recommended if uh, you want to use it just purely for learning, but of course, if you run other side hustles, you want to use it to sort of organize your life, um, give your life some structure, then it's a great app to use. And with this all amazing feature, and it's free, and it's relatively easy to learn, not so easy as some of the other apps. It does have a learning barrier that you need to get over with, so that's sort of a downside. But um, other than that, great app. One note, have its downside, as I already mentioned, but also amazing app if you're already used to it and all of that. Um, it's unlimited canvas, it's really amazing. And uh, RAM nodes, as I mentioned, it's, it's not perfect. I've used it for a while. I switched to other app again, but then finally I decided to come back to it because after balancing all of it, I sort of finding it the best one so far for me as a student for this uh, genre, this period of my life at the moment is the best app to use because that is cool. It is designed for, for learning, for long-term learning, for students. If you look at all of these apps from the point of view of the original concept of design, then RemNode is certainly the most perfect because it is built with the thought of helping students to learn and not as some other random stuff. If you haven't got an app to use, give RemNode a try, but certainly, certainly, there's no objectively the best app. Okay, and it is all about personal preference and what you're used to. If you have an app that you've already been using, for example, if you've always been using Notion, then just stick to Notion because there's no point of changing your habits if it doesn't create a very significant barrier to your learning. And um, that's all I want to talk about today. Uh, it has been relatively a long video, so a lot of talking. Um, if you have any questions or if you're interested in any sp uh, specific feature, or just anything you want, feel free to email me or if you got anything about, you know, medically related, I make medical videos. In general, if in the end, okay, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, send me an email, contact me through uh, my Instagram account that I have down below. I will try to reply to them as soon as possible, but also I do have a medical course on the side, so it gets time. Life gets a little bit busy sometimes, and uh, at the end, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.